All right, welcome back to statistics. This is Dr. Kling. I want to see if I can clear up the distinction between a z-test, this is a z here, between a z-test and a t-test. Uh, in terms of a formula, when we do construct a z-test, we have a null hypothesis, that mu is equal to some mu naught and we have some alternative and I'll just use as the alternative mu is greater than mu naught. Um, if we're doing z then we calculate z is equal to x bar minus mu naught over sigma over square root of n. If we're doing t, we do t equals x bar minus mu naught over s over square root of n. So the only difference between the two is between sigma and s. Now sigma is the true standard deviation. S is your sample standard deviation. So what that means to me is that we can never use an actual z-test because we never know the true standard deviation. We only know it in the context of textbook problems where the textbook gives us this. So this is an artificial exercise and this with the t is a real-world exercise. So that's the difference between those two. And by the way a one prop z is different. So one proportion z test is a real world situation where we where we construct z is equal to p hat minus some null hypothesis p naught all over square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n Let's put that all in uh, under the square root sign. And that, uh, you notice that there's only one uh, unknown parameter in this whole thing. It's p hat. So we, we, we get p hat from our sample. We use it uh, in two places. And we, c we get this one prop z test. I'm not going to talk about the one prop z test anymore. I'm just going to focus on this z versus t uh, distinction. So why does, in some sense, why does the book even bother to use a z-test if it's totally artificial, if we never see it in the real world? It's just a way of connecting all of the jargon that we're, thro that we're throwing at you with, uh, with stuff that we've been st we're familiar with, the norm CDF. The problem with a T is that we can't use norm CDF because uh, when we're using the sample standard deviation we have to we have to use a t distribution and then we that introduces the issues of degrees of freedom and all sorts of uh, and, and so that those complications. And so what we're trying to do is explain things like a p-value um, without having to uh, use that t-distribution, but do it in terms of things that, that we're familiar with, the, the norm CDF. Because that's all what a p-value is. It's a p-value is a percentile that we get 
so we go from natural units to percentiles. Incidentally, in a confidence interval, we go from percentiles to natural units. And we have the same problem that we do with hypothesis tests. That is, in the real world, we have to use t intervals, um, whereas you know, in a textbook context, if we if we pretend that sigma is known, we could use z intervals. But I don't I don't want to talk about confidence intervals. I just want to talk about hypothesis tests. So we have the p value is a percentile. Okay, so we have some natural units. Let's say our mu naught is uh, that something has a mean of 11. And um, we get a sample statistic that says that our sample is 13.8. And then we want to know what is the probability that we would observe that sample statistic if... 11 were true. And that's, uh, <coughs> so that is our measure of how far away our sample result is from our original hypothesis. The farther away it is, the stronger the evidence against the original hypothesis. So, so the farther away x bar from mu naught let me write mu naught a little bit better the farther away x bar is from mu naught the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis that mu equals mu naught so, w and with stronger evidence, we reject H naught and we say our results our results are statistically significant. statistically significant. So we say that there is a very small probability, and by statistically significant we mean that there's a small probability, and we often use the 0.05 as our barrier, although that we could pick a different barrier. Small probability, less than 5% chance that we would have observed our sample results if the null hypothesis were true. And since it, that's a low probability, we choose to reject H naught. And then on the other hand, if we had a probability, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then then our sample results are too close to H naught to reject it. So we can, <coughs> so with using Z, when we're given, so if we're given sigma, we can use Z to calculate the p-value. 
That is, we take z is equal to x bar minus mu naught, and I'll assume the alternative hypothesis is greater than x bar minus mu naught over sigma over square root of n, and we to get the p value, it's just norm CDF from z to a big number. If the alternative hypothesis is uh, mu is less than mu naught, then we take norm CDF from negative 10 to z. And if it's two-sided, we take whichever value is smallest from e from these things and double it. Uh, so if x bar is greater than mu, mu naught, then we take the norm CDF from z to 10 and then multiply it by 2 uh, to get the p-value. Um, okay, so that's with a z, and with a t what we're in effect doing, so with unknown sigma, we use the sample standard deviation, S, and with S, we need to use the T distribution, and that includes degrees of freedom and everything else, and there I just recommend putting it into the calculator. So we could uh, find out, uh, so we could calculate, we could do that in two steps. We could do t is equal to x bar minus mu naught over s over the square root of n, and then do t cdf from t to 10 comma, and then whatever our degrees of freedom are. Um, remember, degrees of freedom is the sample size minus 1. Um, we could do that by hand, or we can skip the, the... So this is two steps, or we could skip these two steps and just go to stats, tests, t-test, and get, get it all in one shot. That, um, there we just... the calculator will take inputs, and it will uh, calculate t for us and it will calculate the p-value. This is this will give us a p-value and will give us a p-value for it. So that's all I have to say on z-tests and t-tests.